Hi everyone, what's up and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all had a lovely time seeing Scream this weekend and if you haven't seen the latest Scream movie, this is a little reminder and a warning to not continue watching this video because this video will be completely full of spoilers. If you want to hear my thoughts without any spoilers then head on over to my last video on my channel. It'll be linked down below where I talk to you guys about all of my thoughts with Scream, avoiding all spoilers. But today is not that day because we're going to be talking full spoilers. So this is pretty much your only warning to please not continue this video if you have not seen Scream. I'm just excited to talk about Scream, so without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is something really minor, and I'm starting with something small, and I'm gonna end with a bang, but I loved a lot of the Easter eggs that we had in this movie. I think definitely the film, like I was saying in my non-spoiler review, was trying to appeal to its fans, but it was still being a very own standalone movie, which I really appreciated, but I liked that we got a little Easter egg that Kirby is alive. You guys know, there's been fan theories for a long time. Kirby is a fan favorite. I mean, she's one of my favorites from Scream 4. And we never actually saw her die. We just saw her get stabbed. So it's always been a theory that she's alive. And I really appreciated that in one of the videos that was coming up on YouTube on the side, we got a little clip of saying, oh, message from Survivor of Stab Wounds. I don't remember what it said, but it was a picture of Kirby. And I just needed to start this video with that because that got me so excited. And there was a moment in the movie where I thought she was actually going to come out. But I don't care. We got that little tease that she's alive and I'm super, super happy about that. And I want to talk about Jenna Ortega's performance. I didn't get a chance to talk about her in my last video because I was scared it was spoiler territory. Just because in the trailer it looks like she's going to die. But as we know in the movie, she makes it out alive. Jenna Ortega and Melissa Barrera were my favorite part of this movie. I loved what Jenna Ortega had to bring. She's a really great actress and I'm very excited to see what she does in the future. What I really liked about her character is that throughout all of these stab wounds, throughout all of these almost near-death experiences, because the girl throughout the entire movie would get out of the hospital and end up coming back in because Ghostface was not messing around. I like that with her character we actually get a sense of fear. I think she was the best actress in showing us that and in pretty much, I think, any screen movie she's one of my favorites the next really important thing that i want to talk about that is a very crucial part of the story that i did not expect comes with sam carpenter's character and that is that her father is billy loomis i was very shocked when that happened you know i never thought they were gonna go for it but they did it and i honestly am really happy that they did i think it brought a lot of depth to her character but also it, it kind of you know put her place in this story and i liked how a lot of the characters were related to legacy characters but i still appreciated how they felt like characters of their own they de-aged ski overage and i thought it looked really great the first time it came out I was a little like, oh my god, are they actually doing this? And as the movie went on, by the time he comes out at the end one last time, I was just really surprised by how they did it because I think it looks really great. And I like that whole dilemma that her character has throughout where she was like, what if I end up turning like him? But I will say that I kind of think that whole reveal with Billy should have waited a little bit. It happens really early in the movie and the movie has incredible pacing so I understand why they wanted this to happen so early so they could keep the plot going and things could be established from an early perspective. But I think they should have kind of waited a little bit because the reveal, I don't want to put the word anticlimactic because I was shocked still to see it and to see all of that happening but I think if they would have kept us wondering a little bit more maybe it would have been even better but who knows I still appreciated the timing that they had but that was just a little thought that I had in there but still that connection is crazy and just seeing him on screen again was a delight genuinely as a really big fan of the original Scream seeing Ski Ulrich de-aged I was like just literally my jaw dropped. I love seeing Randy's sister again and I loved Mindy and Chad, especially Mindy as a character. First of all, I'm really happy that they survived. I don't know how they did it because they brutally got stabbed a lot of times, but hey, clearly in this movie, we can see that people do survive, which I will say, I'm very shocked at how many people survived this Scream movie. I really liked Mindy as a character. She was kind of like the Randy of the movie and I appreciated that, you know, we got some little Randy callbacks in their house and all of that, the little memorial that they have for him. I just thought it was really, really funny. And I also thought the scene where, the scene at the very end of the movie, back at Stu's house, where Mindy is watching Stab and it's the recreation of that really famous scene with Randy and it's kind of like a big parallel because it's happening to Mindy, it's happening to Randy on TV, it happened to Randy in real life. I just thought it was a very clever scene. I also liked her explanation of requels. That is probably one of my new favorite terms, film terminology. I want to talk about my favorite character, Death, and I know it's really weird to say out loud, but I really liked Wes's death. And I was really sad when he died. I kind of wanted him to survive a little bit more. Wes's death was the one that I talked about in my non-spoiler review that just 
the camera was not moving and it was very graphic and it's this whole thing that like you know in scream the deaths i feel have always been graphic and they've always been brutal but they've never showed it to us at this extent and seeing the knife go through his neck was terrifying and i watched this at the movie theater and it's just really the, this big screen and you really can't take your eyes off it and that scene is my favorite death as weird as it sounds because i just like the way it was filmed i think the tension was at its best and it happened pretty early on so it really just set the mood for how this movie was going to continue and i have to talk about another death and that is dewey I'm still very heartbroken. I like Dewey as a character. I've enjoyed him from the first Scream all the way until this one. I did not expect that the reason Sydney would come back would be for Dewey dying and it really sucks because I wanted to see the three of them on screen but I honestly think it benefited the story the way it was told because a question that I had a lot before this movie came out was what the heck is going to make Sydney come back because as we know from Scream She's gone away from Woodsboro, but she always comes back for some reason. But it would make sense that she would come back when her best friend literally just died. I think the way it was done was more realistic to the story, especially with how Sydney was at the time. She had a family. She wasn't just going to drop down for random teenagers, but she would drop down because this was her best friend that just died. So it makes sense the reason she came back. The last thing I want to talk about is probably the most important part of any Scream movie, but the killer reveal. And basically most of my problems and issues with the movie come with the third act of the film, which is almost a shame because I think the third act of any Scream movie should be the strongest part. It's the part that everybody's looking forward to. But before I say that, I do want to say that I, I still enjoyed the third act. I didn't really hate anything in this movie, honestly, but I will say that this, these these aren't my favorite Ghostface of all time, but it's revealed that Ghostface is Richie, which is Sam's boyfriend, and Amber. And I will say, I don't like Amber as Ghostface. I simply don't. I don't really understand their motives. I don't really understand the reason that they're doing this. And again, I've only seen the movie once. I haven't really, like, gotten a chance to dissect it. I feel like if I watch it a second time, maybe I might understand it a little bit better. But from this first viewing, I didn't really buy into it, I didn't get it, and I also think it was very fast-paced for that third act. I feel like we didn't really get a chance to slow down and digest this information. That's how it felt to me, and it was kind of jumbled. I think I like Richie more as a ghost face than Amber. The whole time, though, I was thinking, how did Amber kill Dewey? I know with the camera work, they play with shots, and they, you know, figure things out so you think Ghostface is somebody else or something. But I just can't believe this girl, who was very short, killed Dewey. I don't buy into it, but moving on. But I will say that I was surprised that it was Richie. I didn't really expect it to be him, and I don't know if a baby I was fooled too much because I've heard some people say that the killer in this movie was very predictable. A lot of the times, I just really kept wondering how was he Ghostface because I feel like the entire time he was with Sam or he was at a hospital or he was, you know, whatever place he was supposed to be. That's pretty much what I want to talk about today for the spoiler review. It's just me giving some thoughts on some things that I obviously couldn't talk about in my other video because it would give pretty much the entire movie away but I probably missed a ton of stuff there's so much to talk about with Scream so if you guys want me to talk about anything else let me know down in the comments and also just let me know what your thoughts of this movie are in general but this time you can talk spoilers and if you haven't already make sure to subscribe like and comment to support the channel and I'll make sure to see you guys in the next video bye everyone